so this is Amy Coelho, amycoelho.com, good friends. Robert's probably around somewhere, right? And, uh, he, he is getting so, a, he's getting a part for our RV. Our, we have some engine failure on our RV, so. Yeah, yeah, we're praying for you guys. Yeah. And so tell us a little bit about you. We've got uh, 13 people here, count you and me. And, and tell us a little bit about you. We'll, we'll, uh, we've been asking questions and talking about related to government. Yeah. Yes, well, I, um, I, I, I run uh, Amy Coelho Ministries and Mandate 50. And we have, um, I've been teaching on dreams for the last, oh gosh, 15 years. Uh, John Paul Jackson hired me, I guess, about 15 years ago. And um, I studied under him for, for many, many, many years. And since he has passed away, we just, you know, I decided to go into full-time ministry uh, and do it full-time. Probably, like, I guess I decided the day after he passed away. So, so um, we've been traveling in our RV um, probably about a year and a half now. And we run the largest, our staff runs the largest dream interpretation site on Facebook. And um, it's Prophetic Dreams, Schools, and Interpretation. So that's where we kind of get some of our free product and stuff like that out there. And we also have a mentorship group, a dream mentorship group, and then we also have our online courses uh, for dream interpretation. And right now we're talking a lot about um, inner healing and how God's showing us how to heal our dreams through, or how we heal our physical body by pointing out different roots and stuff like that um, through through inner healing and just through dreams, how God can show us, you know, how healing our thoughts heals the physical body. And we, God will give us the answers to those things in dreams, as well as, you know, keys of justice, like Terry, I'm sure, wants to talk about today, and how we look at those keys of justice and really look at them and, and asking the Lord to pinpoint and roots and how to really look at symbols and how to correlate the symbols to what you're asking about and what you're asking from heaven to answer. Amen. Well, we've been talking about the connection between government and the courtrooms of heaven uh, based on Isaiah 9, 6, of the increase of this government. Uh, and peace, there'll be uh, no end uh, to order it and establish his kingdom on the earth. So dreams are going to uh, help us understand that and uh, take us to a whole new level of you know, maybe not just ourselves, we were talking about how dreams uh, can reveal what's on your books, what's, what's hiding uh, in the blind spot to, uh, to set us free, deliver creation, you and me from the bondage of corruption, so we can come into that place of delivery and pain, and that's what we've been kind of talking about. And you're also uh, in the legal field, right? Yes, so I've spent 25 years in law, and I always wondered, you know, how he was going to use that in business consulting, and and how it even how the two, you know, it took me years to figure out, you know, how we can carry my business hat. You know, I, John Paul sent us to Elijah House, where he sends all bad prophets um, to Elijah House, and I, you know, one of the things that we worked on is what, you know, how the Amy's business hat and how. Amy ministry hat had to integrate and I could never figure out how God was going to integrate those two things until much later in my ministry and in my walk when I realized you know the keys of justice and how understanding the legal field just in knowing how the legal field is structured how that really goes hand in hand with dreams and how God will absolutely reveal the things, you know, I liken it to this, Terry, you know, I jokingly say in conferences, uh, dreams are like the only time God can speak to me where I shut up, you know, where I don't have any say, I can't interrupt him, I can't, I can't put my two cents in, I can't, I can't reword what someone's saying, I can't, it's just what it is, and my consciousness is completely shut down so that he can really speak to me. And what I found in the last year, and I really encourage you guys, I've the last year, and I really encourage you that as you're seeking the courtrooms and as you're seeking, you know, some areas of justice, 
that you write down, and, I, and this is what I told my, my group regarding inner healing. If you have a physical ailment, if you have um, if, an emotional ailment, if there is a financial ailment, listen, I just, on my show, King, um, my show, Journey into the Dream, from Kingdom Flame, um, I just did a four-part series where God wants to heal us emotionally, mentally, physically, and financially. And he will absolutely give you the root. Now, here's what's funny about that, Terry. You know, I was just teaching on the financial healing aspect of it and going and using the scripture based on um, uh, Pharaoh and how Pharaoh, an ungodly king, was about to be attacked financially and how God gave him the answer to heal him financially through Joseph, right? That, that's an ungodly king. How much more does he want to heal us? How much more does God want to heal us ungodly kings sometimes, right? And so, you know, what I was, and it was so funny because I had a financial healing dream that night and God completely unraveled a situation I've been asking about financially and brought financial healing while I was teaching the series. And it was just, it was just really interesting. But here's what I told my, my team, write down the physical ailment, that ailment, that, or even just the injustice, that, that there's some injustice that you've got to, you know, you want taken care of. And what is the root that's holding back injustice? Sometimes our mental thought process, we have been so trained in the church. Weston winning, brother. Weston winning. How are you today, Terry? Weston winning. When hell is breaking down and falling hard around you, but we've been taught image-based Christianity, you know, and instead, so what we're finding out is that, that a lot of times our core belief statement does not line up with our blessed and winning, you know, because there's core belief statements inside of us that are absolutely have frequencies. They have frequencies and those frequencies keep blessings at those frequencies, when you think, and I'm just going to think hypothetically, Gary, when you think to yourself, you know, I need a really good job to provide for my family. I need a really good job. But if you think, if your core belief statement says that you don't deserve a good job, mom and dad didn't have a good job, maybe grandma didn't have a good job, you know, maybe you have never seen a good job before, right? And so a lot of times we, we sit and we go, we, we can say in our head, because the church has taught us our mantras. They've taught us the things to say and to our declarations, which are all good, except for if your core belief statement doesn't line up with your declarations, but you don't go together. I mean, you can wish for a Mercedes all day long, but if you don't think you deserve a Mercedes, you're not getting a Mercedes. It just is because it's really about the core belief statement of value, your identity. And so a lot of times, yes, Connie, there is. If, if, if you can turn off your uh, microphone until you want to ask a question, that's great. It's uh, easier for everyone to hear. Um, but a lot of times, you know, if we say, okay, God, and this is what I've been finding. I've been seeing this time and time and time again. I have been watching this happen in our team. But if you write down that injustice, what is this thing holding back justice? What is this thing that, you know, God, I've been to the courtrooms however many times, or I have been asking you about the physical ailment however many times, and I'm still with it. Then write it down in your dream journal. Write it down in your dream journal. And I don't care if you have to write that same statement down page after page after page. And I actually tell people to do this because you want to see how many pages it takes for God to answer. And what is the answer? Because you're, you're finding patterns out. And so what I, I recommend is you write down the injustice, you write down the ailment, you write down the financial injustice, you write down the physical injustice, the emotional injustice, the relational injustice, write it down and ask God, what's the root? And I promise you, he will answer you. Now, I'm not saying that all answers will come through dreams. We know that not to be true, but I will tell you that if that is where you're knocking, that's where God's going to answer. You know, you're not going to knock on this door and he answers door number three. He's just not that God. 
And so, you know, he speaks to us in illuminated scripture. He speaks to us through uh, situational prophecy, through prophets, through wise counsel, and through dreams, visions, translations, transportations, uh, angelic visitations, and, and heavenly visitations. And so um, it's so important that we keep our eyes open, not lean on dreams as being a primary way of speaking, but keeping our ourself open to the many different ways that God will speak to us, whether a lot of times it could be a billboard as you're driving down the road or a number that keeps popping up or a certain animal that comes near, you know, mine's a red cardinal. I don't know what it is about nature, but red cardinals always find me. And so, you know, it's, but write it down. There's something spiritual about writing things down. People ask me all the time, Amy, you know, is it okay if I just record it in my phone or if I record my dream digitally or I type it out? I have carpal tunnel syndrome, so I type a lot. But yes, there is something very scientific and very spiritual about writing. The, the, the scripture says, write it on your heart. Write it so the herald will run with it. Write it on your doorpost. Write it down. And, and there is something very spiritual about writing. And so I encourage you guys to get that dream journal out and write those injustices down and be very specific. What is the root to this financial injustice? What is the root to this physical injustice? And work hand in hand with the courtrooms along with your dreams, because sometimes we are so, our, the church has trained us not to be self-aware. They've trained us that way. Blessed and winning, brother. Everything's good. Everything's glorious. Uh, you know, declare, declare, declare when your life's falling apart. And then we, we created, we've, we've created ministry to make it look like everything is all together and you have this professional image and then it looks unattainable to other people whose lives are falling apart. And, you know, if you're in ministry, Terry and I could both vouch for this in full-time ministry for 15 years. And guess what? Life is always falling apart. It, life is always falling apart. There's always some craziness happening, but, but people look at our lives and think, wow, they must really have it together. And I'm thinking, boy, if you only knew, just talk to my staff. Listen, I worked for John Paul Jackson and I will tell you the first week of working for him squashed every disillusionment I ever had about ministry because you realize people are people. And so it's important that you know, we, we've been trained that our self-image, that we declare something when we're really dealing with something else. And now I'm not saying don't use those declarations to bring about power of imagination, power of words are very important, but we also have to take care of the subconscious things that are going on. And a lot of times those things are taken care of in dreams because we can go to the courtroom all the time, all the time. Listen, uh, let me put it in legal terms for you. I can go into court with my box of, of evidence all day long and present a case, but guess what? Unless the defense comes with other evidence that I didn't have, I'm not going to win anything. And so there's a lot of things that the enemy knows about us that we're not willing to look inside of ourselves because a lot of times we're too afraid to admit that we're jealous, we're competitive. We've got a uh, lack of value. We've got immaturity. We have a lot of times we don't look at those things and we're not self-aware. And I tell people all the time, dreams are the best place for God to come knocking on your door and say, Hey, can we fix this thing? Can we fix this thing? And he does it so ever so gently. And I tell people, listen, dreams are the one place go negative with God, go negative. What is this dream? What does this dream say about my character? How can I change my character? How can I change? What do I need to repent for? Maybe we don't even recognize it. And I'll tell you, let's look at the dream with, um, let's look at the dream with uh, Abimelech and Sarah and, and Abraham. He, Abimelech takes Sarah. And we know he has Sarah for over nine months. We know that. Why? Because, you know, verses down, I think four verses down, it talks about how his land was barren. So he took a barren woman captive and now his land is barren. Don't, not, trust me, there's some symbol, symbolism there, right? 
But God gives an ungodly king, again, an ungodly king, relationship advice. He heals relationships. Why? Because he says, you need to give that girl back. You know, that was not yours to touch. That, that, that girl belongs to someone else. And Abimelech, whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't know. And he goes, that's why I've kept you from touching her. So he, so of course, Abimelech being not very happy, gives Sarah back to Abraham, right? Now let's look at it from Abraham. First of all, there's no dreams recorded by Abraham over the situation. I, I'm just pointing that out, or at least that we know that's recorded. So, we, so the, the dream comes from an ungodly king again. And now we look at it and say, Abraham wasn't so wonderful. Like he wasn't like, oh, thanks for bringing Sarah back to me. And I'm gonna just let you know, if that was me, I wouldn't talk to Abraham for about two more, four more days because I'm, I'd be pissed that he sold me off to a king because he was fearful. It was because of fear that he gave his wife over to another man. Fear a man will do some crazy stuff, man. But you know what? God wanted that relationship healed. You know why? Because in the next chapter, when Abraham laid down to Abimelech for lying, Sarah laid down to her husband for selling her off for nine months that we know of, and Abimelech laid down to the fact that everyone just lied to him, and they blessed one another. The next chapter, she has a baby. Sarah gets pregnant. So God is about restoring relationships also. And that's the scripture we can look back to and go, God wants us because a lot of times our injustice is because we refuse to recognize that where we need to repent. Where do we need to repent? And, and many times we won't get justice in a situation because we walked out of a church somewhere five years ago and haven't resolved the situation and walked in unity with our brethren. And yet we're screaming and crying over here because God wants us to walk, walk in resolve and repentance, resolve and repentance, resolve and repentance, a repentant heart it is what brings, I mean, when we have a repentant heart, not only does it veil us, people ask me all the time, well, I'm, God, I'm afraid God's going to expose me. Listen, I just dealt with the pastor just recently who was um, having sex outside of his, with someone in the congregation and it, God revealed it. And I'll tell you this, there was, and, and it was like 10 years prior. It wasn't like just now. It was like, there was an affair 10 years ago and he just got exposed. People go, and God's about, listen, God is not playing. We are in a season where he is exposing all kinds of stuff, especially sexual immorality. Why? Because we have a, a head of our country who just repented for sexual impropriety and now everyone's being exposed. And you know, and they said, I am so worried, you know, about uh, me being exposed. And I said, you don't have to worry about that. You know why? Because the moment we have a repentant heart, it, a veil goes over us and the enemy can no longer see us. He can't see our sin and he cannot see us. I said, I guarantee you that pastor who got busted just now ten, for a 10 year old, a 10 year issue did not have a repentant heart. Did not. God is not going to reveal the secrets of another man where there's a repentant heart. It's just not. And so in our dreams is where we say, God, show me where I, where can I repent? Where, where is it? Maybe there's some uh, faulty relationship issues. Maybe I didn't handle the situation when I left work right, or I left my last job correctly, or I left my last church correctly, or I left this relationship correctly, or I left whatever, because many times, and God will reveal that in a dream. Go back and deal with this situation. It, I had a dream last night that had to do with um, reconciling a relationship. Because for me, 2018, the Lord said, is all going to be reconciliation. And so just last night, I had a, another dream about reconciling. And so there are many times where when that maybe we're not getting our answer in the courtroom, but God is not withholding the answer to a root. And I, here's what I find. People go, oh, God, tell me what the issue is to this root. And then they're off to bright, shinier other objects. Because we have an ADD nature. Like, America is ADHD. We are a fast food society. 
And a lot of times God just wants you to tarry with them in, in your, in your dream journal, just tarry with them. No pun intended, Terry. Just, just tarry along with him and, and get in that dream journal and don't leave that page until you get that answer. Do not leave that page until you get that answer. Because many times we have so many other things that are going on that we forget we even prayed about that situation until like two weeks later it comes up again. Because a lot of times we're not honing in and setting our face like flint. Set your face like flint over an issue. Don't let it go. Don't let that issue go. And a lot of times that answer will come through dreams and it will be backed, not only come through dreams, but it'll be backed by wise counsel, courtroom experience, translations, transportations, um, pro prophecy, illuminated scripture. So it'll be backed up with two other recommendations, two other, what we call the re revelatory continuum. Terry's on mute. You're on mute, Terry. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I'm working, figuring this out. You know, that's awesome that you would say that because we were kind of started out that way based on Job 33, where it says uh, he'll uh, speaks to us in a, in a dream, in a vision in the night, and it goes on to say to keep man from pride and to keep our soul from the pit. And so we were talking about how, you know, I said, well, what if I dream about President Trump? You know, we want to be prophetic and say, I had this dream about President Trump, but it's probably about you. It's probably God wanting to set you free from something that, that uh, this person uh, exhibits that, that you're doing the same. So, so rather than being prophetic, let's remove the log out of our own eye. And then if it's still prophetic, it's prophetic. And so we started out there. We gave some examples. We talked about being that governmental ambassador uh the courtroom of heaven uh, how he'll move us into greater realms uh, of governmental authority as we uh use everything dreams including visions hearing tasting touching smelling uh feeling uh all comes into play rather than just having a dream so yeah. we're understanding how governmental we really are and how courtroom of heaven play a part in that that's good. And, you know, when we look at, I, you know, and I love that scripture uh, here, here's how we know, this is how we know, Terry, if you are not actively involved in the dream and you're viewing the dream, it's an extrinsic dream. It means it's a prophetic dream. If you are actively involved in the dream, meaning if you removed yourself, the dream would collapse. Then that dream is about you first and foremost. Now, here's the beauty about dreams. They're multifaceted, multidimensional, which means this. Um, one of my staff members had a dream about Donald Trump the other day. And Donald Trump was got, got in the car and was driving him around. Well, Donald Trump actually reflected me because I'm his boss. So I'm, I'm the president, basically, in, of the ministry. And so what what we look at and go okay let's just look at this let's say donald trump and there's some sexual crime or there's a sexual issue right and you're actively involved in the dream I mean let's say that you're in the car with donald trump he reveals the sexual thing to you and you're driving to whatever burger king and you get out of the car and you go into burger king you are actively involved in the dream which means that it's a re heart reflection where can you repent sexually because when you begin to repent and recognize that's where your power is for the prophetic. That's where your breaker anointing is. So now we look at the dream and go, okay, I am, I'm repenting in this dream because of whatever actions you see. If it is a squirrel under a table gnawing on the feet, you ask yourself, where am I making, causing others to lose peace? If it's a polar bear swiping at the door, where, how does the polar bear's actions reflect you? How does the snake's action reflect you? How does the person committing a crime in a dream reflect you? First and foremost, you always walk through repentance in a dream. Any negative actions, you repent for that because you can't touch anything with dirty hands. Then you look at it and go, okay, now that I have interpreted the dream for this land, how can I interpret this dream and use it for prayer for my family, 
for my business, for my church, for my community, for my state, or my city, for my state, for my nation. And then how does this dream reflect Israel? How does this dream reflect Israel? How can I pray for Israel based on this dream? And you begin to use your dreams as prophetic. You know, I tell my, my team all the time, forget those Bible studies, man. Forget them. L I, listen, I'm writing a Bible study now. But uh, forget the Bible studies. Why? I, and I'm not saying I don't love Bible studies. I love Bible studies. But when you get up in the morning, your Bible study should be your dreams. Your Bible study should be go and sit and meditate on what the Holy Spirit is working on your life right now. Go do that. Save the Bible studies for nighttime or lunch or whatever. But in the mornings, you want to take that time and say, how can I repent through my dream? How can this dream change my character? And then how can I pray for my city, my church, my family, my state? And how can I pray for, with, through Israel with this dream? And use those as intercession tools and breakthrough for your own life. Amen. Uh, let me ask you this. We were talking about a little bit about uh, God revealing things in the past and the present and the future. How would you speak to that in, in uh, dream language? I love this question. Yes. Because dreams are, because God does not operate with by time. We know that. And dreams are a way of us moving outside of time. And so they are, they were, and they will be. And we know this because sometimes we've all encountered um, deja vu. And deja vu is the natural and the supernatural colliding together. It's a glimpse of, not, of what it feels like not to be um, involved in time. And so how you feel in deja vu, how you feel when that happens, is actually what's happening in a dream. So those dreams, and so when we look at past, present, and future, here's what I, I tell people to do. You ask yourself, let's take, a, um, let's take a car spinning out of control. You're in a black car, and it's just spinning out, off of a highway. You would say to yourself, what is happening in my life right now that it feels like what I'm driving, what drives me, cars are what drive you. It could be your profession, your family, your education, your business, your ministry, it's what's driving you at the time. Ask yourself, what is driving me feels like it's spinning out of control. And if you can legitimately look around you and go, no, it seems like for the first time in my life, everything seems smooth. Um, then you go, okay, it's not about today. Then you have to ask yourself, where in the past have I felt like my car is spinning out of control? And if you can say, oh, if it comes to you, and, and, and it's like practicing uh, sozo. It's like practicing um, inner healing where you just ask the Holy Spirit, where in my life is this reflecting? Is it a reflection of? And go, well, no, that doesn't feel right either. Then it's a warning. It's a warning. And so you start today, you look at the main core verb, whether it's spinning out of control, falling, flying, losing something, trying to find something. You want to look at the action word. Circle the action word in green. I always circle it in green because it helps me trigger my thoughts. And I always use, I, I use this, this right here. It's the best thing when you're dream interpreting, right? So I use these different colors so I can circle. Why? Because it's going to trigger my brain into interpreting. That's how I interpret, right? So um, when you do your action words and each, each scene can be a dream in and of itself. So interpret the scenes completely separate, okay? And so each, each scene will have its own core action. Circle it, then another scene will have another core action. Circle it, and then another scene will have another core action. Circle it. Ask yourself, what in my life feels like I'm flying, falling, losing, finding, searching, wondering, where in my life do I feel like that's happening right now? Ask yourself that question. And if you can't really see it, then ask about it later, like in your past, because God can also use dreams after the fact to reveal something before that has happened in the past. So he will actually, because sometimes our, our, our subconscious mind qu queries on like, 
why did that have to go down that way? Why did I lose? You know what, you know, the best predictor of future is to look at past behaviors, right? So a lot of times God will go, now I can show you why that happened. Now you're at a place I can reveal why that happened. Now you've come to a maturity level where I can actually give you that secret now because you'll handle it appropriately. Look in the past. Now here's the beautiful part about God. When you write down your dream in that dream journal, when you write it down, right? And you put, let's say I'm going to put uh, September 2nd. I'm just going to September 2nd. You write down the dream and you write down the revelation of that dream. Here's what's beautiful about dreams. When you go next year, next week or whatever, and you go look at that dream again, that dream will mean something completely different to you than it did, right? It'll, it'll mean something completely different. Why? Because when you read a gospel, when you read a parable or when you read scripture, it means something today and you can go, oh my gosh, that meant, wow, that really spoke to my heart. I can see where something written 2000 years ago means something to me at work today. Well, a year later, you go read that exact same scripture. Like, wait, what? Like, how did I get that out of that? Like now it means something completely different. Why? Because they are spirit to spirit. It is a parable. You can wrap it around anything, which is the deception of that unfortunately can lead to deception too. You can take that scripture and wrap it around. So your dream journal becomes your own personal Bible. And so what happens because it's revelation, it's spirit to spirit communication. The dream isn't just for that night. The dream is for next week. That dream is for next year. That dream is for two years from now. And it will mean something completely different because it's revelation in a little book. I love the Bible and I'm not being sacrilegious. Please hear me out. The Bible's for everybody and I love the Bible. How much more meaningful to, though that your dream journal is your own personal Bible from your Jesus that's being written right now. And you can go back because it's just revelation. Dreams are revelation. Therefore, they never expire. That you can never exhaust revelation. So your dreams, you can never exhaust them. You use them as intercession tools. Go back. I have someone on my staff that has a every, for some reason, his dreams come to pass every two years, two years. So if he has a dream today in two years, it'll come to pass. It's the weirdest thing. I've never seen that before, but it just comes to pass every two years. So he literally will get up, go to his dream journal and look two years from now what it is today. He'll literally go do that. And it's crazy how accurate it is. And so what he does is he goes in there. And so I encourage you to go back through your dreams and, and go back and reread them that day, the, that day, go back and reread them and see, number one, it shows you how far you've come. It shows what has been healed, what has, cause we lose track of that stuff. And your dream journal really is like, it shows you your growth. It shows you your growth. Yeah, Amy, we were talking about the progression of our dreams from uh, using my example, like when I first got born again, I was in prisons and I was trying to escape out of prison. All these gangs of dark demonic men would attack me and pin me to the wall with their knives and spears. Now, you know, years and years and years, I would get beat up every time. Now I beat them up and I've always been in, in the dream. So there was a progression in those dreams and, and thank God the dreams were there. And now I'm seeing a correlation between our dreams, how we can use that as evidence in the courtrooms that maybe God shows us something about our future in the, yes. in the future, that we can use that just like uh, uh, a defendant would use that. Here's Satan over here accusing you of all these things, why this can't happen. And then all of a sudden, well, here's the evidence. I've got this dream. Yeah. And, and so we can use that legally to break the bondage of, of corruption and and deliver us, you know, move, keep us from the pit. Yes. And mm -hmm. really open up that the heavens for God to release the fullness of that dream into your life. So it's uh, really cool. I'll ask yeah. you one more, one more thing. Uh, uh, you can add to that if you like. But, uh, you know, I see a lot of uh, dream interpretation books with symbol, symbol, symbols. They're great, wonderful. But I use them as a guideline only. And I use the expression, 
the demonstration of seven fat cows and seven lean cows. I haven't seen a single single dream interpretation book that said that cows represent years and uh, you know prosperity, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, and thank yes, this is a great question. Um, notice that John Paul, the father of dream interpretation of our generation, never put out a dream symbol book ever. You, you it, there's no dream symbol book that says John Paul Jackson. You know why? Because he forced us to, to ask the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is your dream symbol book. The Holy Spirit is your Google. Don't Google dream symbols online. Please, God, don't. Because it will take you into all kinds of crazy. And not only that, but that's what your meditation is for. He wants to reveal those to you. Now, I'm not saying that I don't own dream symbol books. In fact, I, if you, uh, it's $30 and you can get a dream symbol. I have a, a dream symbol um, spreadsheet that you can add to, but it's got over 5,000 dream symbols. And here's what I do use them to refer to. And here's what dream symbols. Now, John Paul wouldn't let us use dream symbol books. Now, he didn't say, you know, never use a dream symbol book. Here's what he learned. He taught us how to use them. Dream symbol books are good to teach you how to think about symbols, how to think. So if you're looking at a car, because if you, if you go look at any other dream symbol book, those, those dream symbol books are going to tell you that a car means ministry. No, they don't. I, I interpret dreams in the city of New Orleans on, in the French Quarter. Go tell those people their car means a ministry. They're going to look at you like, what? <laughs> ministry to what? And ministry, the band? Remember that one, Terry? And so, um, because we don't, we, we, we have to look at how symbols work in a car, a car is driving you. So you ask yourself, what is driving me in my life right now? You know, the car that's driving you is black. What is dark in my life right now that's driving me? If it is a um, perfect example, if it's a, um, a raccoon was in my dream the other night. A raccoon has the bandits, right? It looks like a thief. What is being stolen from me right now? Right? A, a table is what you serve stuff on. Right now we're talking about inner healing. So a lot of times in our group, in our mentorship group, we're talking about inner healing. So a house, what, what rooms in the houses reflect our body? You know, the bathroom reflect, can reflect our, you know, um, dig like our toxicity system, our lymph node system. Whereas the kitchen can be our digestive system. Attic can be our thought life. You know, basement can be our, uh, the foundational issues in our life. And so you just have to sit and meditate and incubate the dream. And I love what you said too, Terry, that yes, I want to add to what you said about the progression of dreams. I have taught for 15 years at conferences and every single time someone brings a dream to me, I can tell them exactly where they're at in their walk with the Lord. I could say, because I, because I know the progression and you progress through um, a, a lot of dreams that have like, like Pharaoh and Abimelech had kingly dreams, right? Cause they, they dream according to their influence. So Joseph, who was in a field that saw stars and a moon, right? Or wheats or the bales of wheat had a dream with his language, his cultural language. Whereas uh, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed of statues and gold and iron. Well, it would have been odd for Joseph to have those dreams because we dream according to our level of influence in our culture and our economics, right? So we dream. So when we look at those things and, and you could see the progression of the dreams, right? It wasn't as Joseph progressed, then all of a sudden he's able to interpret dreams of uh, kingly dreams. Now, let me tell you something. He had to have known about cows in order to interpret this symbol about cows. How, how would Joseph have known anything about cows? Because he was in a field. He was in a field. God used his dreams and his language in Abimelech. And that's why we never have to be afraid going, I wonder if they come to me if I'm a misinterpret the dream. No, they're coming to you for a dream interpretation because you have the language they need. We all have our own dream language, which is why you don't want to get stuck in dream symbol books because God wants to create your dream symbol language that is just unique to you, your culture, your economic system. Your, if, if I dreamt, I, I grew up very wealthy and in my family. So if I were to dream of a trailer park, 
it would mean something completely different to my assistant who grew up in a trailer, right? So I would see, then let's look at it this way. I used to live in Honduras. Or let's look at this. You know, um, if I dream of a, of a cow, I'm thinking prosperity. But I'm from Texas. If I was in India dreaming about a cow, we'd have a whole different problem if I'm eating a cow, right? In Texas, we eat cows. In India, don't eat cows. So do you, you see the symbolism is completely different. That's why you cannot get stuck on dream symbol books. And pay attention to people's dreams because as you, you'll notice the progression becomes more intrinsic where it's talking about a lot of infighting. Like I haven't had a nightmare and I can't probably, I mean, I don't even, I don't have nightmares because my dream life is kept so clean, right? So I don't, I just don't have nightmares. And, and yeah, I'm not saying I don't have scary dreams that terrify me upon my bed at night, you know, because as prophetic people, you will have dreams that terrify you but it's not for you. It's not to bring hopelessness and defeat and stuff like that. So you, you can see where people are at by their dreams, whether there's a lot of fighting or arguing or uh, being in prison or being drowning or, you know, can't find themselves or can't find out where they're at or lost themselves in wherever. And then as you progress, all of a sudden you notice that your dreams are more extrinsic. You're, you're viewing it. You're having more out of body experiences. You're having more translation experiences. You're having more angelic angels showing up in your room or in your dreams or whatnot. Your, your dreams progress and they get healthier and healthier and healthier. And that's how you know where you're at self-reflection. We self-reflect where we're at. And another thing that Terry had mentioned about um, taking them and using them as evidence, this is insane. I tell people all the time, when you have a dream that has a resolve, say you lost something and you're going back and then all of a sudden you don't, know, you don't only find that, but then you find like a whole stack of gold. Then you go and you lay your bed at night. Don't turn on your television. Don't look at your phone. Don't look. And listen, separation is hard, but we have to be separated from the world. Sometimes check, we want to check out and we want to watch TV, read a romance novel, get on our phones or whatever. But you want to see God, get that stuff out of your room. Get it out of your room. And you lay your head down and you begin incubating the resolve of that dream. You, you, here's what I tell people, enter into the dream. I can enter into your dreams and I can receive your dreams. You know how? Because Gideon heard two ungodly people interpreting dreams and he entered into it and took the gift of courage out of it. He actually received a gift by t listening to two people's dreams. So I can receive your gift. I can come into your dream and I can also receive that, that same gift. And you can too. And so I tell people, when you have a dream about resolve, a resolve like finding money, like I had the other day, I was in my RV and I had uh, a stack of uh, rolled up money. Somebody gave me a rolled up stack of money. You know what I did that night? I laid my head down and I began feeling the feeling of what it felt like. I entered back into the dream and I began to allow the feeling of what it felt like to hold that money. I began to imagine and see it. I began to use the power of imagination to bring it in. And I began to uh, incubate the dream. I felt it. I allowed the feelings of excitement and provision to come up because that's the law of attraction. That's really the law. This was, that's, listen, they didn't cut, New Angels didn't come up with that stuff. Jesus came up with that stuff, law of attraction. That's called seed time and harvest. <laughs> so so you, you bring that stuff in. By feeling the feelings of your dreams, you enter back in what it feels like for, to in, get in that new car. My husband just had a dream where he was driving a new fifth wheel. You know what? I entered into the dream with him. Let me feel that feeling with you. You know, feel, enter it in, feel the feelings of it, feel the, the, the passion, allow it to well, don't, and us analytical people, we'll just think about it and we know how to separate. We can keep our emotions out of things. Don't do that. That's the worst thing you can do. You need your emotions. Your emotions are so important for manifesting your dreams. Get, let your feelings feel the feeling of what it feels like to have what you dreamed about, what God showed you. 
Dreams are to be taken into your natural and used as a tool. Your dream is a weapon of your warfare and your evidence in court. Oh, man, that's good. That's good. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, you know, I'm going to, uh, wow, I'm just, I'm in awe. Uh, why don't you tell us how to uh, uh, get a hold of you? I know uh, I want to ask everybody to sew that's here online live, and once we put it on YouTube, I know your RV engine just locked up, and you could possibly need some finances to help out with that just a little bit. That doesn't cost five, ten dollars. That's pretty expensive stuff. So I want to ask you to sew into our ministry. Tell us how to connect with you and learn more about dreams. I I love your perspective from a legal field. How uh, I've heard a lot of people talk on dreams, but nobody like you. And so, so yeah, it's amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to listen to this a couple, two or three times to get every little nugget out of it. <laughs> and yeah, so, sister. yeah, talk as long as you, talk as long as you want. It's getting a little noise. There's a bunch of kids came in. So talk as long as you want. Tell us how to do that. You can close when you get okay. done. Yes. Um, and, and thank you so much. And I was taught by one of the, one of the best and, and he was really good to me. In fact, he showed up recent. He showed up yesterday in Estheritha's dream. She's the director of my ministry, and told her how proud he is of me. And so it's so amazing when you have your spiritual father still there and still reaching in and and still talking to you, you know, and telling you that you know he's proud of me, and that means a lot to me. You know, it's a blessing. He taught me a lot, and um, and I've learned a lot too. I I study the rabbinic text. I don't just study. You know, I found that a lot of our dream teachers that to, in this day and age are um, still have a lot of um, psych pop psychology and in their interpretations and in their in their teaching of dream interpretation. So it's important to go back and look at the rabbinic text. Go back and look at the Hebraic way and of of thinking, and go back and look at you know the Aramaic text. Right now, I'm lurk, I'm I'm reading a lot of Persian texts because Persian is one of the very first cultures um, that talked about dreams. So it's important to go back to those the fathers of of dream. You know what they thought about dreams, uh, and really kind of hone in on the Hebraic understanding. I find that a lot of a lot of teaching today gets diluted and worn down because it's passed on and nobody, they're regurgitating. And that's what's, you know, that's what's hard about learning, learning dreams. Um, you can absolutely, yes, our RV locked up on us and we are stuck, stuck in Trinidad, Colorado, apparently one of the most um, pot headed cities in all of Colorado. Everybody's high here. It's crazy. They're nice. But they're all just stoned. And so I asked the Lord, I, I looked at my husband. I said, oh, God, please don't tell me we're stuck. Like, you're like, because when we get stuck places, it's because God wants to do something. So I thought, OK, Lord, let's let's see what let's see what we do. But um, our engine did lock up on us. And we're just we're just seeking the Lord and asking him what what does he want here? And, and what does he want from us here? And to do and and so um you can connect with me on amycoello.com that's c-o-e-l-l-o amycoello.com um if you jump over to my facebook page give me a like we have uh you'll we've got stuff coming up all the time i've got a webinar coming up on the first and 15th of every month this year and we also have our 12-week online course that just started um that just started this month, but it's 12 weeks of uh, dream interpretation training where we go through 30 minutes of scriptural basis. And then I actually walk you through, let me tell you, you can read every dream interpretation book out there. And every time you're going to walk away going, huh? Because you don't learn by theory. Dream interpretation is better caught than taught. And so watching someone go through it all, just watching how they do it, watch how they work with the Holy spirit. Watch the intricacy and the dance the Holy Spirit makes in the dream um, is one of the best ways to learn dream interpretation. So we teach you that where you just watch us go. And I actually walk through the dream step by step. And it can take me up to an hour to get through one dream because that's how intricately I go. I believe that every single symbol means something because every hair on my head is counted and every tear he holds in my hand. Therefore, every symbol in a dream means something. And so uh, you can also connect with me. I, my, uh, I have a, 
donation button on my website at amycoelho.com or you can PayPal as amy at amycoelho.com, A-M-Y. And um, yeah, so you can also find us on Prophetic Dream Symbols and Interpretation is our free Facebook group. We've got 49,000 members on there, so bear with us. There's only 10 of us and 49,000 of them. So, um, so just bear with us. You see all kinds of crazy on there, but, but it's for the world. And we interpret, we have witches and warlocks and Africans and um, new agers on there all the time. So you get all kinds of crazy interpretations, but we also teach you how to, uh, people ask me all the time, why, why do you allow just new agers to interpret? Well, because I'm trying to teach you how to differentiate a, a true interpretation. Like if I just got rid of all the bad interpretations, you wouldn't know how to weigh your interpretations. And so you just have to weigh in on, you know, ask the Holy Spirit to bear witness with the, with the interpretations given. And it teaches you on that side too. Um, but we've got those going on for dreams and stuff. Terry, thank you so much for having me. I love that you even thought of dreams correlating with the courtroom of heaven. I've been praying through that since you invited me and God's even shown me even more stuff about that. So I'd love to develop that a little bit further with you. That'd be great. All right. Well, the part two is coming up then. Huh? And so, uh, do you, Amy, do you have time to answer a few questions? From, sure. Yeah, from some absolutely. People? Okay, great. Great. All right. You guys just unmute yourself and uh, if you have a question. Amy's the one. Amy's the man. Well, you know, sort man. <laughs> I'm a spirit man. I think we got some questions. Did we get some questions down here? No, okay. No, everyone's just saying good. Good. I'm glad it meant some to you. If you got any questions, and then you can also email me at an info at amycoelho.com if you have any questions. We'll be sure to get back to you. Um, one of the things that I love about our 12 week program is that um, every question that they have, we're actually building out more product and, and more understanding. So like if you're going through it and you're like, that doesn't make sense, we go back in and we redo it until it makes sense to you. And so we are, we build it. It's more, it's a refining process and we, we love doing that. Uh, what does it mean? What, what does a shark mean in a dream? Okay. I love this because you can't just ask what does a shark mean in a dream and and here let me tell you why every dream symbol is is in correlation to context it's kind of like this you can't take out a scripture and make it and set it up and say what does this mean you have to read five you know like my professor in seminary taught me you have to read five sentences up and five sentences down or you know the what is the chapter above it and Every single scripture is context dependent. He used to make us say that every single day. All scripture is context dependent. Therefore, all dream symbols are context dependent. So a shark, I could tell you what a shark acts like. A shark is a tearing apart. It's also water spirit, right? It's under the water and it tears one apart. It's a tearing up. It's a, it's a ravishing spirit. It ravishes and it seeks to destroy. Um, but it, uh, it specifically operates in water. So we are talking about a water spirit, which is a more of like a Leviathan Jezebelic uh, spirit. And so I can tell you what it does and how it acts, but I can't tell you what it means because it, 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 may, the, it may completely change based on the context of the dream. It depends if the shark is in a tank or is the shark in the ocean, is a shark in a pond, is the shark on land, all of that makes a difference and that's how you know what the symbol means because everything surrounding the symbol actually has to do with the symbol so so please don't text me and go what does a dolphin mean in a dream i get that all the time yeah i imagine you do <laughs> just like i get questions about the courtroom of heaven yeah. how do you do this in the courtroom of heaven well you follow the context of a natural court and it's always different and you follow yeah. the holy spirit same same dimension same. Yeah. You know what I love about uh, courtrooms, though, Terry? In 25 years, I will tell you this, just like dreams, right? Dreams are like snowflakes. There's not one. I've, been, I've, been, I've interpreted a bazillion dreams. Is that even a number? Because that's how many I've interpreted. But you know that none of them are the same. They may have the cor same core aspect, but none of them are the same. 
And do you know that every court case I've ever been in, 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 a, in a courtroom, not one of them are the same. Not one courtroom, not one argument, not one evidence, not one way of presenting has ever been the same. That's an amazing point. That's what I've been trying to share with people. They want to have rules. A formula. It's a formula rather than guidelines. They don't want to seek the Lord. And the Holy Spirit is going to give us the interpretation. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. And so we have, rather than following protocols and books, uh, we follow the Holy Spirit. He's our legal counselor. It's true. <laughs> it's like the moment that I think that I can figure out a formula of how dreams go is the moment he rips the carpet out from under me and goes, nope, just kidding, we're doing it this way now. And so I tell people all the time, there is no formula in dream interpretation. I wish there was, there just isn't. And I wish there was a, you know, I can, I, there's a checklist, like I go colors, numbers, action, noun, people, but that's all you can do. It's the Holy Spirit literally dances through the dream and puts it all, weaves it all together. And I know that because I still to this day step back and go, wow, How, what? just because you know you didn't interpret it. You know that you did not interpret that dream. And all you, you're, I am a li liaison between the dreamer and their God. And I basically just put the, the hands, their hands together. And I step back and I go, wow. That was amazing, Lord. I don't know how you do it, but you just do it every time. Wow. And that's the way we should feel after a dream and after helping someone interpret their dreams. Listen, guys, you know, in the last days, he will pour out his spirit upon all men and they will what? They will what? They will dream dreams. They will see visions. They will prophesy. Dreams and visions and the prophetic will usher in the second coming of Christ. Will usher in. And so if we, our job, my goal, my mandate is to raise up interpreters for the last days. And let me tell you something, we got 49,000 people. And that's not to say good job, Amy, in marketing. That's to say people are dreaming, guys. They are dreaming and we need help. We need help with these dreams because even we have people all over going, hey, I had this dream. Hey, I, and there's one of me and like a zillion of them. And I used to tell people all the time, I was like, Lord, the world doesn't need another dream interpreter you know, trying to get out of ministry and, and the Lord's going, yeah, there's not enough of you. There's not enough of you. And, and so my mandate is to raise up an army of interpreters to be able to interpret the dreams that he's pouring out upon all man. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's mine. Uh, God told me to stop doing courts for him and teach him how to fish. So same thing. We need more legislators and uh, we need more groups to get together that can, you know, I teach and reproduce reproducers. That's what we're after. That's what we're doing. Yeah. That's apostolic. That's that's the new kingdom ministry. So uh, awesome, Amy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank uh, you, guys. Yeah. Why don't you uh, pray, Amy, for okay. us, and, and then we'll close and get out of here. All right. Yeah. I'd be honored. Thank you, Lord. We just ask you, Father. We ask you, God, that you would lay your hands on each and every person here. Everyone in attendance, Lord, I ask that you would pour your spirit out upon them. Father, I ask for a supernatural understanding of dream interpretation, the ability to understand symbols, God. I ask you, Father, that you would move mightily in their life, that where they're struggling, God, where there's an injustice, Lord, we call you into our dream life we invite you and say thank you for your blessing and the favor that you've shown us by revealing to us your kingdom through our dreams god i bless each and every one of you with the ability the authority and the influence to interpret and father where their identity is weak in any areas of fear of interpreting or uh, what will people think, or I'm not an interpreter. Lord, you've called all of us to be prophetic and to walk in the prophetic. Therefore, we can all interpret dreams. Lord, I just ask that you would reveal any weaknesses and you would burn them up in Jesus' name. Bring us into our identity, Lord. Bring us into the identity of who we are as a prophet of God. That we would be made manifest on this earth sons, Lord, of your kingdom. 
that we can show the world who you are, that you're speaking through dreams, God. You're speaking directly to them through their dreams. Lord, that we would reveal to them who you are by just the interpretation of their dreams. Lord, unveil our eyes. Unveil our eyes in this season, God. Give us a supernatural understanding, a parabolic language. I speak a parabolic language into your heart right now. I release that over you, that you would be mantled with the parabolic language of heaven. Thank you, Father. We honor you. We bless you. We thank you that you are a good, good God with a good, good gift, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah, we do not want to see behind there. We do not talk, want to see behind there. Talk about unveiling. It was happening. Right. I just speak. Yeah. Robert just had that happen. He was uh, worshiping and he started singing Unveil. He wrote a song called Unveil and the whole curtain came down. Oh, man. <laughs> That's funny. It's a physical manifestation. You yeah. Can, you, listen, they, they towed us into an RV park and I'm going to use that word very loosely because to me, you, do, you are not an RV park unless you have a fire pit and a grill. It's not an RV. This is an RV graveyard. Anyway, and <laughs> And it was like, I, I started crying. I was like, you're going to leave me here? And I will tell you, these people are the nicest people. They do go from each other. They pop from each other's uh, RV with bongs, but they're the nicest people. And, and it's just so funny, but man, outside I'm like, yeah. Scary. <laughs> Thank right. you guys for having me. I love you guys. Bless you and blessings on your ministry. Yeah, we'll do it again. Thank you, Amy. We're talking okay, about right we, when you guys get back to Louisiana, I'll come over and it's all contingent on Robert cooking Cajun food for me. And we'll That's do programs right. of having over there, dream, put it all together. And do some yeah. Great, great stuff. Let's do it. Love uh, you guys. Love I gotta you hop, I'm going to hop on to another meeting real quick. All right. Bye-bye. Love bye -bye. you guys. Thank you for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thank you, Tim. Thank you.